Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. You're watching our special coverage, Tides of Terror. Now on Checkpoint, we want to analyze the radicalization of youth in this country, take a look at the security forces and their efforts in terms of stemming uh, terror in this country. And you are free to get in touch with us on Twitter. We're using the hashtag tonight, Tide of Terror. You can also send in your text uh, messages to the number 22155. Let me introduce my panel to you this evening. On my extreme left, we have Andrew Franklin, who's a former US Marine, who's a security analyst and has lived in the country for over 30 years. And today we'll be bringing us his expertise. Right next to him is Salah Abdi Sheikh, who also um, has some great history on Somalis in Kenya and is the author of the book Blood on the Runway, which details the Wagala massacre. Then after that, we have Joseph Kagudi, who spearheads the Nyumbakumi Initiative, and we'll be taking a look at how this can be used, perhaps in the fight against terror. And then we have Masood Mwini, the police spokesperson. Thank you very much all for joining us this evening. Let's start by understanding how we got to this point and the key uh, thing that we're talking about today is radicalization a very new term in Kenyan lingo but this obviously didn't just start yesterday let's start with you Andrew can you explain how we got to this point well radicalization uh, is actually has a long history in Kenya uh, we when we're now dealing with Islamic radicalization but and violence but in fact, radicalization that leads to violence seems to occur when legitimate grievances are ignored by the authorities. For example, land being taken away in the White Highlands, people being pushed into reserves, poll taxes, hut taxes. Uh, in other words, uh, racial discrimination. Mm -hmm. uh, and when peaceful means fail, mm -hmm. There's only one way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, people turn to violence. If you look at apartheid South Africa, racial and religious uh, discrimination led to the spirit of the nation mm -hmm. uh, and almost a civil war. Okay. Uh, so it's not as if radicalization is new. Mm -hmm. In fact, radicalization occurs around the world whenever there are legitimate grievances. But the effects only start to show themselves much, much later with a lot of this anger deep-seated amongst uh, some people. Salah, uh, he's just talked about the fact that there's some people who feel um, marginalized for a long time and some I, I, I think we need to look at, uh, for the purpose of Kenya, we need to look, mm -hmm. at, to look at the whole history rather than just uh, pieces of history. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, I looked more at the Somali factor rather than the what is happening in Mombasa, what mm -hmm. is happening in Somalia, all that, but just the Somali factor in Kenya. Okay. And uh, the problem started in 1963. Uh, the raids on Somalis did not start yesterday. The profiling did not start yesterday. The, the uh, marginalization did not start yesterday. It started in 1963. And we have actually the, 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 the news to show that. We, we, in 1977. Uh, 1989, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 1978, and somebody actually writing Somalis as as what as uh, yeah he says uh, they were what they are parasites. What's the word that's used? You look at it. Look at every other clippings and every other year. Kenya government has been raiding Somali homes for 50 years. 50 years. So if your homes are being raided for 50 years, probably to get angry, I think it's not a very Reasonable, unreasonable expectation. But there are two, now Kenya is facing two, three things at the same time. The Somali factor, the Islamic uh, extremism that people talk about, and the change in, in technology, media, the access, accessibility to information. Mm -hmm. So put those three together and you have a, a time bomb. So what we are facing is, I think, bigger than the way it's being presented. because. 50 years of marginalization add accessibility to, to, mm -hmm. to information and accessibility to people who will tell you now you can do something about it. Mm -hmm. And then now add other things, because other communities are joining in. So Mombasa was not part of the, mm -hmm. of, of, of the problem mm -hmm. just a few years ago. Now it was the Northern the Frontier yeah. District that so there was the problem? Again, is the Kenya government helping by clamping on a whole community, by putting 6,000 people in a, in a st stadium, which looks like a concentration, concentration camp to me, is it actually helping? Okay. It is not. It is All creating right. more terrorists 
every night. All right, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to the government in just a moment. And Kaguthi, you haven't been in the government um, for the years that, of course, his Asala is detailing. Uh, what do you think has been the contribution of the government in terms of contributing towards radicalization? <laughs> Spatkira matter is bigger than he is mentioning. Mm -hmm. Go to the colonial time. Mm -hmm. Go to the time of independence. Mm -hmm. Go to the time there was a, even a referendum. Go to the time the, the boundaries were being put. Mm -hmm. Part of uh, the natives. That time, uh, some Maasai are left in Tanzania. Others are in Kenya. Iteso are in Uganda. Others are here. Mm -hmm. The others are in uh, Somalia are left the other side. Mm -hmm. Others are on this side. And one of the world causes of uh, trouble are boundaries. Others are religion. Others are ideology. Mm -hmm. So we've gone through all that. Don't you know for any moment the issue of the Cold War, which was that time. Okay. You can go to what was happening in Somalia, which mm -hmm. way did they go that time? Mm -hmm. Where did the Ethiopia go? Kenya becoming a, a low pressure belt, mm -hmm. all that. Then you, you look at the shifter uh, war, look at the, 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 the whole process of, uh, of uh, the settling of the country, the politics in town here. Mm -hmm. You go to, for this, this issue of, uh, uh, of marginalization, you go to nearly every province. I covered uh, 47 counties, mm -hmm. finished with Garissa just the other day, mm -hmm. uh, recently because of the Nyumbakumi. And in virtually every area you get, we, are, we need this, we need this, we are not being recognized here. Okay. Like, can't, therefore, uh -huh. don't look at it from a narrow point of view. Right. Uh, don't look at it uh, because you go ethnic. While you, go, while you were in government, hmm. was that something that was considered? Were you looking at it from the bigger point of view and trying to address some of those issues that you mentioned uh, or even uh, pre-independence? One of uh, the items that used to be there throughout the provincial security committees uh, the district security committees is the ethnic kind of balance, mm -hmm. just like the morale of, uh, of, of the staff. Mm -hmm. And all those matter to the balances. And when I look now back at the country, I'll tell you for sure that the country continues growing, but it has upheavals. Mm -hmm. Some like now, the, 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 the information that you've passed mm -hmm. through here now, mm -hmm. very depress, depressing situation, mm -hmm. suffering of people, mm -hmm. the, the disagreements which are there. The one group is saying that, why are you killing people who are worshipping? Mm -hmm. Another one, why are you killing our leaders? Mm -hmm. Others are trying to get a uh, way out. But before long, they settle. Those things have been there through, through. If you, you, you just get um, 69, for instance, mm -hmm. I was uh, of, a, of, a, of a younger age. And there was one time it was, you could see, as if it's going to, to explode. And because of the Cold War, those things have been oscillating like okay. this. So the only thing you can do is now look at it from where we are now, like the way I am now. Coming in, Kidogo uh, to government, very, very briefly to government, mm -hmm. to assist the whole system mm -hmm. in devolving management of security and uh -huh. crime, mm -hmm. devolving it devolving to it. the lowest level. And, Nyumbakumi, and is, is a Nyumbakumi is one of those solutions. It and is. we'll get to that in just a moment. But let's bring in the police uh, and, and bring it now to present day. Uh, the operation that's taking place in Isli, there have been complaints about that, mm -hmm. about bribery taking place, about some people being required to bribe the policemen in order to get away, and complaints like you hear from uh, Asala and others about how it is being conducted. Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't think that uh, the government is entirely at fault here uh, because when such an operation is conducted, it is normally conducted, one, we must understand that it is conducted in utmost good faith. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the government will be uh, any happier to vilify uh, its own citizen or her own citizen, if we may so. But again, uh, there are aspects here of security at hand. Mm -hmm. Who are we after? And how do we get to them? So what is happening right now is that people are being uh, screened, people are being rounded up, but at the end of the day, we must understand that since the operation started, anybody who has been, uh, been, able, to, uh, uh, been able to be accounted for, he or she has been set free. You know, we are getting complaints that people are being uh, illegally held in that place, mm -hmm. uh, that people are being forced to pay money to go free, but we have got issues here of Kenyans, either of Somali origin or of, mm -hmm. of uh, other ethnic groups, mm -hmm. Luyas, Luos, Kikuyus, 
all manner of people are being arrested and picked to the place. And then, on verification of their documents, they're being released. We have got underage people. They are Kenyans, yes, still of Somali origin, but they are underage. And uh, they have not acquired ID cards or documents. These people are being verified through their parents. They say, well, I am a Kenyan. I'm in school. My parent is so-and-so. So we call the parents. They come, verify them. Some of them are pe being picked in the streets. They have no okay. documents. And then they get with them. Eventually, they uh, get released. Masood, many yes. would ask why we got to this point in the first place, yes. that you are now in Isli mm -hmm. uh, with several barricades um, right within uh, Isli area itself. Why was this not being done on a systematic basis before and now even to quote what uh, the deputy president said we would tamwaga police uh, previously uh, remember we must also understand that Kenya is a country with laws it has a constitution which guarantees freedom of a uh, movement expression but not of refugees uh, right yes and uh, you know we would not want a situation where we make Kenya a police state or uh, rather we label each and every person a suspect but now, uh, security has been conducted mm -hmm. uh, on a daily basis in order of maybe priority, in order of necessity, because we wouldn't want to scare everybody else. Okay. Out of My question, though, is how did all of these people who, um, if you claim, yes. um, were not meant to be there in the first place mm -hmm. and got through our borders, mm -hmm. got into the Dadaab refugee camp and made their way into the city? Many would say we're putting the cart before the horse because these people should not have Evolve. been allowed it's to be in Islam in the that, first place. Uh, some people are taking advantage of the goodness of Kenyans. Because, for example, I will trust The you. goodness or the bribery? Because no, obviously they wouldn't get here uh, on a clean course, would they? I think uh, to an extent the goodness of Kenyans. The bri bribery part, if it's there, and we have had complaints, and it is being investigated, by the way. If there are any officers who are engaged in this vice, right now, these officers are in deep, big trouble. But we don't want to say that. We want to use facts. Now, the issue of people coming into Isli, mm -hmm. into Mombasa, into Nairobi, uh, and they are not supposed to be in these places. Maybe they're supposed to be in refugee camps, mm -hmm. they're supposed to be in Kenya, but with documents, either mm -hmm. travel visas or something. Mm -hmm. This now is something we are working on, because we know Kenya, again, is not a country which operates in isolation. Sala, you don't seem convinced. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not really convinced mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. First of all, the constitution is being raped mm -hmm. in the first place. Mm -hmm. It is here, the constitution so? says, if you, are, if you are arrested, you are taken to court. Yes. Within how 24 many hours? hours. 24, 24 hours. 24 hours. Yes. How many people do you have for, for, for four days? Mm -hmm. 6,000 people. Mm -hmm. So. I think that 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 and, that, and here's that, a, that here's beats, an interesting question. Day, that here's an interesting question, no, no, though. We've had so many people who've been arrested. Where are they being held? Just a minute, because now the number is even more scary. We don't have six thousand people there, not even one thousand people. <laughs> and I, I, you you called me in the day. I told you I was there personally. These people are less than five hundred there. People this is at Kasarani. Yes, they've okay. been processed, they've been released. But in addition to what uh, the people who are in Kasarani, yes. we did hear there's been 400 people who've been uh, taken in Isli today. Mm -hmm. um, following the Likoni church attack, yes. you will recall mm -hmm. the more than 100 youth who were um, arrested. Yes. 49 of them were then charged with loitering, mm -hmm. which then many said meant you had no intel? Uh, or they were arrested? No, when mm -hmm. an arrest is made, you know there must be justification for that arrest. The officer, you know, he'll have a very big issue trying to prove a case against you in court. And I'm sure nobody will be taken to court if the officer has no credible case against the person. Okay. Remember, we'll have cases collapsing in court. And it will show the officers have been very, very I, I think they'll, they'll, they'll still collapse in, collapse in court because, first of all, mm -hmm. Uh, you cannot enter somebody's house without a search warrant. Yeah. That's, a, that's in the constitution. It's not in the other laws. It's here. Yeah, it is uh, their their home. You know their possessions, information relating to themselves, yes. their privacy. Mm -hmm. If somebody goes to court we, under the current regime yes. and uh, says that my house was searched, and you found and it was a, you haven't found a, you've even found a grenade, yes. and you search that house without a search warrant, yes. the judge will throw it away. Now, what will you do actually? Unless, what, unless what you context, have taken procedure. What context the of the law, Masood, are you using yeah. in this uh, operation in Isli? Yeah, because you know uh, unless the constitution was suspended, because there's a, there's a portion here that says the constitution can be suspended, yes. and there is an emergency. It's an emergency the law. Emergency that means everybody's rights have been suspended. Oh, okay. The police can do whatever they want. So I think the president should have started with first, let's suspend, suspend the constitution, constitution. put yes. the emergency law, then put the police there. And then everybody will have said, okay, it's emergency. So this is a security yeah. operation, which we must also all appreciate. But and under which law are you actually doing it? If, the so if this is the constitution, then you are, you are out of it. That constitution also has, I think, section 24, 
which also gives certain limitations in terms of how we conduct ourselves. Section 24. Let's, no. let's take a look at that. Yes. Section 24. Let's take a look at Section 24. Uh, a right or fundamental freedom in the Bill of Rights shall not be limited except by law. Which law? That's the question. Which law? Because in this case, you are touching people's homes. Mm -hmm. You are going into at midnight, not, in the, not yes. work time. But in the interest of national security, yes. not I, even I am, individual I am, security. I am, I am, I am, actually, I am actually a national of this country. I am yes. a citizen. Mm -hmm. I have rights. Mm -hmm. So you cannot come to my house, search it. Yes. Okay. You understand? All right. And then tell me <coughs> that you are to protect. You are you are breaking the constitution to, where we are to now, protect me. Are you convinced or are you happy that up, uh, the police have been able to recover a material which could be harmful to people? If 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 they did, yes, correct. But if it's taken before a court of law, yes. and you are told you can't mm -hmm. even take this person any further, yes. then what have you helped? Because you're supposed to have investigated it. Because then you would have yeah. the same individuals yeah. out yeah. back you have on yourself, the street. Yeah, the same crooks will be out back there. Back on the street, and you'll be doing the operation because again. Because you bungled the, 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 the investigation. Uh, but it is not that uh, this thing is being done haphazardly or indiscriminately for that matter. I live in Italy. You live in Israel. Yes. So uh, I have. I am actually okay. on the front line of, of, of the. All right. But so are you have you been arrested? Oh. Have you been arrested or stopped? Several times. I have been. I have been stopped several times. Okay. But, but, uh, were you but because I can. I can speak uh, several languages. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh, um, then I can include. include is it yes. the language or okay. you are? Yeah. All right. Let us look at the languages. I didn't, I don't want to. Gentlemen, though. Um, just, I think we need to clarify yes. what part in the law um, gives you the justification to conduct the operation that you are in Italy. I may not be able to. Or, or should that. it be that, you know, these are extraordinary times and that the law should be put aside? The situation necessitates Is that what you're saying? certain operation. Okay. Because right now, so many lives are at risk here. And we must bring now sanity back into the people so that they know, one, the government is there to protect them, but also the people who are on the wrong side of the law should also know that they have no time and place to play about with Kenyans like okay. Actually, right. we, agree with you. We, agree, we agree with him. We okay. agree with the police. Right. We support the uh -huh. police. Yes. But we don't want to leave in a country that has become a police state. Okay, all right. And, um, and, what, uh, and we I will get, we will, gentlemen, we have to know, move this conversation yes. a little forward. Kaguti will come to you in a moment. But Andrew, while we're still talking about the police, let's talk about how much we're investing in the police service and whether they are equipped enough uh, in this war on terror. Well, I think we, the investment is roughly 80 billion shillings. The fact is, though, there is no Kenyan National Police Service. The act of in, passed in 2011 has never been enacted. We went into the election in 2013 without a unified police force. Uh, since the launch of Operation Linda and Chi, which was of limited duration and with limited objectives, roughly 400 to 450 police officers have been killed mm -hmm. in cross-border raids mm -hmm. by Al-Shabaab. 450 police officers killed in the line of duty since Operation Linda. And yes. That should be a big number that should get us... That um, should angry. get... The, the, yeah. We are focusing now on something going on in Eastleigh mm -hmm. where less than two weeks ago a, a vehicle with military-grade explosives mm -hmm. was recovered yeah. having been driven through Mandara from some Al-Shabaab facility mm -hmm. to all the way to Mombasa. Mm -hmm. And they're still looking for two, at least two more vehicles of, with military grade explosives. These are no longer fertilizer and fuel oil bombs, mm -hmm. such as blew up Assinance mm -hmm. or the U.S. Embassy. Uh, the fact is that the border is porous, it's open, and it needs to be closed. But no one seems to want to say, how do we do it? Should we do it? Uh, uh, this this uh, a cafe gets blown up mm -hmm. in Eastleigh and mm -hmm. people get thrown into the Kasserani. And, and, yeah. and yet, we don't go back to uh, the middle of October 2011 to ask, isn't that when things really mm -hmm. started? Mm -hmm. Yes, because indeed, since that time, since we went into Somalia, 37 attacks, 25 of those, have, uh, the Al-Shabaab have claimed uh, responsibility. responsibility yes. And, you know, a there number is, of there deaths. There's yes. a problem here. Mm -hmm. uh, as you said, the, the border is actually 700 mm -hmm. kilometers. Yes. Think, yeah. yeah, 700 kilometers. Mm -hmm. But the Kenyan Immigration and Police Service actually on the River, they are 200 kilometers into Kenya. Mm -hmm. So they don't care who comes up to that point. Mm -hmm. And if you come up to that point, then you can cross anywhere in the Tana River 
and come to Nairobi and wherever you want. So but, the the border, the river bridge, mm -hmm. is where people are checked. It is the immigration which is supposed to have been in in Limoy. Mm -hmm. You understand? So mm -hmm. if you look at the, the whole the whole priority is upside down. Are we looking at Kenya as a whole? Are we looking at Kenya which is sort of divided into half? One half is uh, nobody cares about. Nobody cares about the security of people in Wajir, Mandera, Gariza. Even if they are blown up, nobody is caring. But, the border, but you, are, you are trying to protect those people who are after the bridge. Okay, the let's border, talk about our borders the border and, and, and the efforts to secure that. The border in uh, Tana River, that is uh, where, where you're talking about, is just one aspect. We have got checkpoints, literally all strategic points along the border. But again, the porosity of the border cannot be underscored enough here. Mm -hmm. And yet, we have got so many illegal and uh, unauthorized and designated entry points where people can come in. So we what are the efforts in terms of securing so our now, borders? Thank you very much. Uh, since the IG came into office, he has made a strong case to ensure that he empowers and reinforces the police service. One, through getting a modern and sophisticated equipment. Right now, Such as? Right now we need uh, surveillance equipment along the border. Okay. And these are now in the process of being procured. All the borderline will have equipment which will be able to enable the officers to surveil mm -hmm. the border in a way that they are able to interdict any elements coming in or moving out of the border. But also the numbers, because equipment on its own will not be enough. So we are also working on the numbers, and we have already seen a commitment on the government to increase the number of the officers. We are also working on the point? mobility. Let, let's, the let's have some specifics mm -hmm. now. Um, because when you take a look at Mandera Point 1, yes. which is uh, you know, our border, there's... That's a border point, point 1. Border point, point 1. Yes. How many administration police officers do you have there? We may not give numbers outrightly. But uh, suffice it to say that uh, we have officers who right now are able to contain the situation with the limited they resources. They are able to do that? Let me interrupt here. Yes, please. I think you are, you, let's be real. Mm -hmm. 700 uh, kilometers. Mm -hmm. It is between here and beyond that to Kampala. Absolutely. And when you are talking that you are only bringing the immigration mm -hmm. to check to a one point mm -hmm. uh, here, mm -hmm. 700 kilometers, you want police officers to be kept all along? No. Not possible. And what you do uh -huh. is what the, the, this new initiative, mm -hmm. which you are leaving uh, the stone that the builders refused, ended up being the, the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. I was in Garissa and it was fantastic for me to hear Garissa people leaders telling us that this is what has happened. Mm -hmm. Every time kuna bomb, kuna bomb, everybody is rounded up, we told the police no more. We as leaders now will take it up. We want to introduce Juajira Nyako initiative. Mm -hmm. You are in a meeting, know the person on the left, yes. know the person on the right, know the one at the, at the front, mm -hmm. know the other one, border, border, motorcycles, they are all being registered okay. by them. Okay. Let's now, talk about the actually, effectiveness of Nyumbakumi exactly. so far and its operation. Well, it's, devolve, yes. devolve, devolve so that everybody in, like this is really here where we are suffering. Uh -huh. It's not starting. These people did not come the other day. Yeah, because even when I was here, the, the corruption was there. You remember I did tell the, mm -hmm. the, 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 your group, mm -hmm. you put it that Kagudi says, Nyayo House and City Hall are dense of corruption. And I had to set systems to start because even but at obviously, that time, Nyumbakumi, they were selling. Yes, Nyumbakumi is obviously not working in a place like Isli where it all of these things that you're finding, no, just this, I mean, might, this operation might have, not have been necessitated have if the people come. felt they could trust the police enough to say, uh, the person who's living in my building, I'm not sure I trust him. I will tell you. I think there's, there's you one aspect that's being left out. There's one aspect that's being left out. The one that I want to, to, okay. to elaborate right. is this. Okay, finish. Um, it is just starting. There are clusters. Give the people opportunity so that everybody becomes sensitive to what they are seeing, sensitive to, to what they are hearing, and we now increase the capacity, we, we build the capacity so that the citizens are empowered. We tell the police officer, you got also okay. to be trusted. I'd like to have, I'd like to have some down. timelines, and, and Salah, maybe you can come yeah, in. Uh, but uh, later, uh, to have some timelines, we're uh, saying it's just starting. I, I think we're saying one, the police one, want one to invest more. One aspect that both more. the police and uh -huh. the Yuma Kumi initiative right. is, not, uh, is not going to address. Mm -hmm. One is 
you have put about, I think the number that's been 6,000, mm -hmm. it is in the social media, it's on Facebook, it's everywhere that 6,000 people are being held there. Nobody has come out to say they are 500. So we're just hearing from you, mm -hmm. no problem. But the 6,100 police officers was, were actually official, official figures from somewhere in the police, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, how many of them speak Somali? That's, uh, that's one thing. Because you are talking, you are, you are, you are going to raid homes yes. that belong to a specific ethnic community mm -hmm. that has a uh, specific language in which they communicate themselves. That is true, but so how however, many people, however, however Salah, yes. allow, me to, allow me to English. ask yeah. also, how many even though actually, they do, like you say, yeah. we should have persons that speak uh, Somali amongst yes. the police force, but should we also Somali have people in Isli who speak Kiswahili speak Somali, and yeah, English, no, no, which no, are the no, national no, languages no, no, of, no, of no Kenya? No problem. If you want to know intelligence, if you want to know how, what people are thinking, what people are saying, shouldn't you be knowing the language I'm not saying that they should be Somali police officers I'm saying that there are so many other people who actually speak mm -hmm. the language the language has become a very uh, uh, it's available everywhere yes. so how many actually police officers do you have on the ground who can speak the language of the people you are, you are, you are okay looking at but the people we're looking at should be able to speak Kiswahili which is the national uh, language. how many if you go to deep in Yanza, deep in Yanza, I've well, been there they, they many do of the people don't speak don't speak at Swahili. all at all i have been there so don't tell yeah, me that the pc that, yeah. who was in charge and, yeah. and was at addressing all. those people through through yes. in kiswahili and yeah, you are also addressing us in kiswahili, 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 kiswahili. Over there. 99 percent yeah. of kenyans speak swahili okay. i think <coughs> i think that is a that oh. is the most because outrageous uh, 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 things that with people respect. actually because that with is the national language. With, I, have been, been to, I have been to many places. Right, with, with respect, with respect, no one, uh, no one seemed to object to the assertion that we had failed to implement the National Police Service Act. Okay. The yes. reality of the border is that we need is that it's a construction project. Mm -hmm. It's Lapset. Mm -hmm. Now Lapset has to run through a war zone. Mm -hmm apparently, mm -hmm. or it could be used as we did in the United States when we built our interstate highway system mm -hmm. under Eisenhower as a security measure. Mm -hmm. and instead of calling an economic Vision 2030 project, why not find out where we can get the funding for proper barrier planning, for actually surveilling the border, mm -hmm. the, the reaction time has has to be uh, uh, assisted with roads, with road construction, mm -hmm. vehicles. Uh, we happen to have nearly 4,500 4, troops in southern Somalia, while an insurgency is raging across the three counties of Northeast Province. The uh, so behind our successful intervention, so-called successful intervention, we have an insurgency, okay. a genuine. All right. Classic insurgency. I'd like us to talk about whether this always seems like a quick fix. Uh, we see the attack in Likoni, we see a grenade blowing up in Nisli, uh, we see um, one that was apparently being assembled and it blows up in Pangani, we have an attack shortly after, and then we have the police swoops that's netting thousands of people in the country. Can we talk about, you know, as probably we come to the close of our discussion about making this more sustainable about how we can win this fight about it being a bit more of intelligence gathering um, you know and reading trends into maybe what's happening in Mandera and how that would affect what's happening in Isli how what's happening in Isli would affect residents in uh, Busia for example um, let's talk about the long-term solutions because to some extent and while I suppose uh, many Kenyans appreciate what's happening in Italy it sometimes seems like a knee-jerk reaction I think uh, the biggest problem we have right now is people trying to uh, agree that we cannot fight the war not only on terror but on crime generally using the police or the security agencies alone it is a collective undertaking where each and every person need to be involved unfortunately even as the government brings initiatives, community policing in Bakuma and so on and so forth, people continue saying it won't work, simply because there are some people who are comfortable the way things are. And they are now taking advantage of the previous problems in the police institution where there were bad relations with the public and so on and so forth. So in your, view, in your view, what is the solution now? What will make Kenyans feel safer? Because now it can happen while you're in a Matatu, it can happen at a bus stop, it can happen in Mombasa. Yvonne, these things are normally assembled where people are. Mm -hmm. They are normally stored where people are. They are normally transported amongst people. The public needs to trans trust us, give us information. 
Don't with the whole the information deliberately because you know you have got a stake. And you give them a reason to trust you. Oh, they surely can start trust us. Because now they are dealing with a police entity which has changed. Nobody would want to be labeled incompetent. And sure, the police service does not want to be seen to be incompetent or failing. Okay. We are doing our best. Do you also do do you also board. have intelligence gathering? I mean, as opposed to asking the residents to come to you and say, I know what's happening here. There is. Do you have that's how you see some of these things uh, being uh, interdicted. Okay. Yeah, very because, quickly, before remember, we move on to the next one, uh, very quickly, Masood, yes. is there a shoot to kill order? Nelson Marwa said it, as the county commander of Mombasa. Is there a shoot to kill order? Uh, the police, rather, the law does not allow uh, killing. We are allowed as police officers to use arms in extreme dire conditions and not to kill, to immobilize, to effect arrest. So there is no shoot to kill order? There is no shoot to kill order. The solution, get every citizen, every leader to start being involved in the securing of the area they are in. We need to change a mindset within our police uh, service, the officers. The syllabus got to be revisited until it comes to be that they are service. The citizens must be helped as a client to appreciate the police, the law enforcement agencies, mm -hmm. and the definition of policing is that proactive system, which happened before even uh, we got our, even the colonial administration came, whereby is a proactive system process where they secure their laws, their order for social and economic okay. order. Now, quickly give us a status update you, on Nyumbakumi mm. and when a Kenyan can start to feel its effects? Let's put it this way. The visits that we had with the County Security and Intelligence Committee, all of them, mm -hmm. we finished uh, last Thursday in, uh, in Garissa. We are standardizing the way they form those clusters. Mm -hmm. Take it from me. Let the peace committees stay. There are traditional customary systems the others which have been said, what we don't want is vigilantes mm -hmm. and allow each cluster and their leaders. So when, when is this going to happen? Oh. Is it already happening? Because no, there's it's many already, Kenyans who, no, it's already, who might say, I'm not feeling Nyumbakumi. Wherever you are staying, wherever you are staying, you, you have a gated community or you have a, a neighborhood association. We are recognizing that neighborhood association, and all we are doing now is mm -hmm. to bring it closer mm -hmm. so that they are able, we are able to, to, to help the law enforcement agencies, the citizen, come closer because the, the mistrust is still very wide. Okay. If you listen to him talking, uh -huh. if you listen to him talking, you can get he is not, he's not happy. Right. He doesn't think that the leaders in his city have been consulted adequately. He okay. doesn't think that even now the engagement is good. Okay. As Let's soon as this operation is over, uh -huh. we take that uh, the people that we have already engaged, particularly the, those committees, those, those uh, senior security officers, they are going to reestablish those clusters so that they keep off those operations. All right. Tell Garissa to tell to, to give you the example of what they have done. Okay. To ask Let's ask have Salah. They will tell you the All same. Right. Okay. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Salah. I, I think Nyumbakumi, Final Nyumbakumi comments. Nyumbakumi is uh, something that we imported from a neighboring country called Tanzania. Tanzania. Not necessarily. Yes. Yeah. Actually, it is. And, uh, I must I must correct. No, actually, it is. It, the whole no, 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 world. It okay. is. Okay. The whole world. No, it, it is. All right. We're closing our discussion. Don't so. allow. Yeah, don't allow please. this one to go, to go like that. Please. Okay. Tanzania. I have been to Tanzania and we are not going to have. Let's let's have Salah. We borrowed it from Tanzania. What we haven't borrowed, which you need to borrow, is mm -hmm. when uh, Boston Marathon bombing happened, mm -hmm. did the Americans go around getting any Caucasian, uh, Eastern European guy that, uh, who's a Muslim and put him in jail? Mm -hmm. No. They looked for the perpetrators, mm -hmm. found them actually, mm -hmm. killed one of them mm -hmm. and put the other in jail. When 9 11 happened, did they put every Arab in, in jail? No. Actually, what they did is they found the people who were behind it. Many of them were dead. Okay. You understand? Yeah. And there was nothing like 6,000 people in jail. And, okay. you, and you bring in two issues that are not even related. Refugeeism and terrorism are not related. So terrorism you don't see the relationship there between no, the two? There is no relationship. The Kenyans were terrorists. The refugees were terrorists. Okay. The Somalis were terrorists. The Somalis were terrorists. So when and you bring two issues that, that are not related together, mm -hmm. you, have, you are punishing a community. You are not actually policing. So I think 
what will happen is we should be sent. What we are doing now is we are killing a mosquito with a hammer. Okay. And what that's what's likely to happen is now obvious. We get ourselves hurt. Andrew, I think, uh, final comments. Oh, oh, you want to interject very quickly? I'm running out of time. Oh, yeah, I think uh, we are getting your sentiments. But let us appreciate that uh, we are pursuing people in all fronts. And it is the people who are not supposed to be in where they are who we are pursuing. Okay. At Andrew? the end of the day, Kenyans will thank us for that. All right. Andrew? In fact, it's the failure to implement the law mm -hmm. that, is caused, that has created the situation that has led to the notion of a military command in the, to control to fight crime and terrorism in Nairobi rather than the police. It led to the killing of policemen, Ooh, friendly yeah, yeah, yeah. fire at Westgate, mm -hmm. and the illegal deployment of the KDF inside of the borders of Kenya without National Assembly approval. And three and a half late days later, the destruction of the Westgate mm -hmm. Mall when the recce unit was already there. The thing is, we are ignoring the fact that we're not implementing any of the security legislation mm -hmm. that has been passed since 2011. The security legislation passed in the spirit of the new constitution is, I don't think people are reading it. In fact, I wonder that whether anyone in parliament mm -hmm. is reading it. Is when this one of the, the issues you're going to address? Enacting the legislations Andrew is talking about? Yes, it will definitely be one of the issues we want to take note of. Are you we know. You're not concerned that it's not been <laughs> put in place uh, since 2011? One idea uh -huh. to, to the table, which is very... You, uh, you asked about the shoot to kill order, whether it was in place. Eh? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think this is 1988, mm -hmm. and the President Moore actually gave a shoot to kill mm -hmm. order for poachers, mm -hmm. and we're still losing mm -hmm. elephants and... Rhinos. And, uh, and rhinos. So, uh, shoot to kill orders do not work. Uh, remember, the poachers also are people who will try all means to evade okay. the security agencies and everyone. All right, I think we're, we're, <laughs> we're going last, into other my issues. My parting shot is simple. In a minute. My parting shot is simple. On any national television, mm -hmm. let's avoid being insensitive mm -hmm. to the victims, mm -hmm. either of the operation mm -hmm. or of terror. Mm -hmm or even losing our own police officers mm -hmm. because we are just pushing a certain cause. Mm -hmm. Let's be, at least because this constitution mm -hmm. has one problem. It doesn't have the duties and responsibilities of citizens. Okay. Unlike Tanzania and like all the others. Uh -huh. And that's why we are all So you're taking it back to the citizens and the yes, role that they can let, play let in the war We are devolving okay. to the citizens okay. so that they participate effectively so that we avoid this, the, right. the, what you are calling Niger Kaido systems. I think we leave it at that, gentlemen. I thank you so much for joining us on our discussion tonight, our special coverage, Tide of Terror. I just want to read you one tweet from Ekuam Lomulen. You say, so ironic that the war against Al-Shabaab is successful in Somalia and a total failure in Kenya. Those are some of your views. Keep them coming in. Remember, the hashtag is Tide of Terror. We take a short break now. We'll be right back. <laughs>